I have a pretty large Nintendo Switch collection, but there's a holy grail item that I've always wanted. The Nintendo Switch kiosk. Ask any video game collector, game kiosks are usually extremely sought after. If I don't find one of these things now, I'm probably not going to be able to feasibly buy one. And I gotta give a shout out to one of my Twitch followers, Just David Barber, who sent me a link to one in Macari right here in my home state of Pennsylvania. He essentially told me that he had a really big game store that had a massive basement under it filled with video games that nobody has ever seen. And if we come pick up the kiosk, we can dive into his back room. So now all of a sudden this has gone from me going to pick up a cool Nintendo kiosk to me, Kim, and our friends Kip and Liv driving two hours to a small little podunk town to buy some video games in a man's basement. Gonna be a good day. So <laughs> as I'm standing here, shoveling all this snow out the back of my truck. I am worried that it's not gonna fit. Really? He, he measured it and he said it's six feet. And the back of this truck is five feet. I'm putting a lot of faith that I'm not about to drive two hours to the middle of nowhere for nothing right now, but it's time for a road trip. We are driving three hours to go to Hinkle's Toy Barn, which is a video game and toy store up in Milton, PA. All right, we're here. This reminds me of when I was with the Game Chasers once and we went to that video game store in the middle of nowhere town like this. It's the same vibes. We just drove all this way and the store is closed. In fact, I'm looking in the window and I think the store is closed down. I think I've been had. This was a scam. He hates your YouTube content. He hates YouTubers. He hates YouTubers, especially Nintendo-based YouTubers. I've already given him my $1,500 and the store ain't here. I'm also like trying to call him and call him and he's not picking up. So there, there was a moment here that I thought I'd be telling Kim and Liv that uh, we came a long way for nothing. I was very concerned when we pulled up to the wrong store because we drove a long way and yeah. uh, that would have been bad. Thankfully, this guy just has too much stuff and this old location is too small to house it all. How far is the new store? Away. All right, thank you, buddy. All right, bye. bye. Okay, but we tell them the store is back near the house. Yes. The boys were like, so the other store is two hours the way Oh we yeah, came. you did try to lie and say that we drove two hours in the wrong direction. The bad news is that the store that we're now going to uh -huh. is an hour back the way we just came. No. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. Nuh-uh. Dude, when I talk to him. To us? You're lying. You gotta say something or else it seems like we are lying. <laughs> so he moved around the corner to a bigger barn. Hinkle's bigger toy barn. That's terrible. <laughs> so we go there and he shows up in a Jurassic Park Jeep. What's going on guys? Is that your, your daily commuter? One of the three. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. How man. you doing buddy? Good. Gary. Hey man, Kip. How you doing, How you doing guys? Hi. Nice meeting oh, you guys. Yeah. Turns out he's kind of obsessed with Jurassic Park. So much Jurassic Park. Half of the store is dedicated to Jurassic Park toys and memorabilia. We asked him at one point why he likes Jurassic Park so much, and he just said, I watched it as a kid. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. When Unicorn Overlord was revealed at that recent Nintendo Direct, I giggled at the silly name because it's like, Two of the complete opposite things coming together. Demonic sprinkles or fluffy decapitation. <laughs> it just didn't seem to work. What I didn't know at the time was that this game was being developed by Vanillaware. Yeah, the same people that made 13 Sentinels and Dragon's Crown. And that was a beat-em-up. Show some respect. It's also their fourth game published by Atlas. So I take back all my giggles. I will now accept the unicorn as, as my, my one and only true overlord. Unicorn Overlord is a retro fantasy strategy and pays homage to old school 16 and 32 bit classics. It's a strategy RPG adventure where you forge alliances, liberate kingdoms, and explore an expansive world with beautiful 2D visuals. Much like other Vanillaware projects, the art focused on 2D designs rather than the 3D art that is dominating the video games industry. And I gotta say, it looks really good. I don't know if it's hand-drawn or painted, but it's just stunning. The game is 40 to 50 hours long. There's even a demo out right now that you can play for a few hours, which is 
actually how I've been playing it. And the best thing is all your progress carries over to the main game. So there's no reason not to at least try it out. This game has a rich and advanced tactic system. That's all about arranging your units, using active skills, unit formations, mixing up class types, 60 unique characters, a large variety of items and weapons. And honestly, so much more that's just gone over my head. I'm just running around the world picking up side quests. Unicorn Overlord is available digitally on Nintendo Switch, Xbox X and S, PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 and physically baby on Nintendo Switch, Xbox X and PlayStation 5. Pre-order is available now and the game launches on March 8th. 2024. Easily one of my favorite sponsors to take on the channel is Nintendo Switch games on the eShop. It, it couldn't be more perfect. So thank you Unicorn Overlord for sponsoring. Check out all their links down below. I mean, at least play the demo for the music alone. Have you been listening? Okay. Walking into Hinkle's Toy Barn was a little um, different. It didn't look like a toy store at all. No. I was skeptical at this point. I was a little confused that it was a furniture store. Come to find out he is sharing this location right now. And eventually he's going to take over the whole place. Well, this store has everything. You can get your rock slate or you can get the rock WWE wrestler. <laughs> For now, a lot of his inventory is in the basement. The video game section is pretty small though. There was a tiny corner that was the video game section. Was there a couple of GameCubes in there? There's a PlayStation 1. Really dirty though. There's a cool store. There's not as many video games as I was hoping and definitely no Nintendo Switch. Everyone else is liking it and I'm just here for my kiosk, so I'm having a good time. The actual toy store is more for Kip, Kim and Liv, who were all losing their minds at this point. Kip was going cuckoo for Coco Pops over the pop figures. He didn't have a good selection of Spider-Man Pops. There was a couple that I wanted. I definitely don't have this with a spider bot, so... Found something. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I hate pop figures. They are so ugly, I've never understood them. Initially, I thought the store was that one little closet because we walked in and it was just that. It looked like the smallest little store. Side. It was so it was cool because like... it just went on forever after you got in there. I was really itching to get into these back rooms though. So finally, he opens this door in the back of the store. So this guy offered us to see his back door. That's the wrong word. <laughs> He'd sold this to us as if he was giving us this private tour that no one's ever seen. And we walk through on our own. It was Gary, who we had just met. I want to throw that out there. Seems like a lovely guy, but they always do. Moments before a moida. So the, the vibe's getting eerie, coupled with the fact that he then says... Uh, you guys ever had uh, Chef Brody, uh raviolis and stuff like that? Yeah, love them. Okay, cool. This was the building that was the meat packaging plant. Gets even worse, though, as he takes us straight to the meat kill. These were like old meat kilns. Alexa, what happens in a meat kill? This might answer your question. Cannibalism is the <laughs> As he wrenches up the giant metal lever, it scrapes against the door. It was at that point I thought we were going to die. The vibe of everything changed in this moment. If you don't know what a kiln is, it's a small room that gets very, very hot. There was a moment where I was like, we've left the girls in the shop. It's me, you, and this dude, and it's dark, and it's cold, and there's a kiln. It's like Hansel and Gretel. Thankfully, he didn't cook us alive. There were old 90s standees in here. The kiln is filled with old standees from oh, the 90s. Oh, nice. Whoa! Disney and cartoon nostalgic standees. He then starts showing us the Pokemon stuff that nobody has ever seen, which sounded really cool to begin with, and then it ended up being Hungry Jack's branded Pokemon stuff no one's ever seen, which, to be honest, is still pretty cool. We're talking all the old placemats and fry packets from the 90s in condition that looks like they could stop fat frying some fries right now and shove them into these bad boys and serve them up. There was an old VHS for how to set up all of the Pokemon merchandise. Even the tape looked like it never been watched. So all of this has just been in the first back room. There's another back room where my kiosk is. So he takes us around to that and holy moly, it's gorgeous. We traveled so far that we just hoped that the kiosk was gonna be in the kind of condition that was worth the trip. Thankfully it was, it was super. 
You know what I mean? That's like documentary style. <laughs> I can't stress enough that I really, really have wanted one of these for a long time. It does make me very happy. This is one of them weird collectible things where certain pieces can be missing. This has everything. It even has the cardboard removable cover that covers where the Joy-Cons and the Switch would go. This is as complete as a Switch kiosk could be, minus the Joy-Cons. What happened to those? Can, uh, those ones, are, they took, the, so they have a rep from Nintendo that comes and they've got got everything. Mm -hmm. So they take the system itself, like this is just the charging system for it, and they take the controller. The fact that everything else is here is insane. There is also a screen that is usually in the left-hand side in this missing gap here. What's nice about these with the other two that we had, did you ever hear of Raspberry Pi? Yeah. So you can hook it up to add a bunch of extra things to it. Okay. And one thing that I didn't mention until now is somewhere in my collection, I have a kiosk Nintendo Switch. A kiosk Nintendo Switch is one specifically released with these kiosks and they only have a series of demo games. All right, we're gonna leave this kiosk here for a second and we're gonna go and explore the basement. Was sketch. <laughs> yeah. We just stuff. trusted a stranger. Yeah, we did do that. Cause he said, come to my basement kids. We have toys. And I said, don't yep. do that. The basement couldn't be creepier. I gotta be honest. You gotta remember, we are in the middle of nowhere. Nobody can hear a scream out here, let alone in the basement of a meat factory that has a kiln. <laughs> I don't wanna make Gary feel bad. He was very nice, very sweet, but there's always a chance. <laughs> Almost immediately, he took us down to another room in the basement that I can only describe as the room where he keeps the bodies. Cause there were just body bags everywhere that could have just had disembodied people. It looked like a room of death. We definitely thought there were body bags in that room. But they weren't body bags. They were McDonald's standees, which clearly you keep in trash bags. When you used to go to McDonald's and out the front, they'd have the Happy Meal displays. Each one of these bags had a different one of them in it. Do you know if any of these are like Nintendo or Pokemon? So we did have the Pokemon one. That one sold for a little over $8,000. Holy sh yeah. This is the kind of stuff that you call priceless because who else has a collection of this? And then the rest of the basement was filled with tubs and tubs of Transformers, old board games, Barbies. Barbies! It stretches all this way, all back there where Kim has been digging through. I don't even- For gold. Yeah, thank you. Polly Pockets. The weird nostalgic items that are hidden down here is baffling to me. Boxes of M&Ms here from the millennia, the year 2000. It's stuff that you would never think of. I feel really bad that I don't collect this stuff. I'm probably not the right person to be given this opportunity. I wish the toy chasers were here. Kim and Liv though, losing their minds. Oh my gosh, the My Little Pony. We did, did. find some nice porcelain dolls. Yeah, dressed like clowns, didn't want that oh my house. gosh, they were so cute, but Kip hates clowns. Oh, we got the strawberry shortcake. Yeah, baking pan. You want a strawberry shortcake pan? You need her for your kitchen. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you were loving the box of The Simpsons. Oh yeah, I did get some Simpsons figurines. I was getting pretty overwhelmed in the basement. There was just so much stuff. We just didn't really have the time for it. I figured my best bet of finding anything that I was actually gonna buy would be back up in the store. So I did one last sweep up here. Feels like we're never gonna see the girls again. Yeah, I know, this is that part of the movie. And found some cool things actually. Growing up, I was in the video games. I didn't really have many toys, nothing like licensed anyway. But these I did have. He has two of them here for 25 bucks and they're sealed. You don't know what you're gonna get. There's a Charizard, Pikachu, Jigglypuff, Poliwhirl, Mewtwo, and Togepi. I had one, but it was like the worst one. I think it was like a Jigglypuff or something. And I always wanted a Charizard. No, it was a Togepi. I had the Togepi. I got Is there it. a Poliwhirl? I got it twice, yeah. I also found a Chiet figure from Persona 4 while Gary was talking to me. And he came over and just went, you can have that. And I appreciate it so much. And now is probably a good time to stop making jokes about Gary trying to kill us and talk about how Gary was so heckin' nice. His whole vibe was very small country family, come on in and I'll make you dinner kind of vibe. You shouldn't trust strangers like that, but he has something we really, really wanted and it was that <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> display Thingy. case. Yeah. Thingy. I also never mentioned this. He's a big wrestling fan. And my friend Kip, he wrestles for AEW. He's on TV. You like AEW? He's not that great, but no, no, I'm not going to be a WWE guy. 
but we have a lot of wrestlers that'll come here and do signings. We had Eric Rowan here, we had Ted DiBiase, we had Sergeant Slaughter. Wrestling hasn't been what it's been in the past 20 years. And we were kind of messing with him and being like, tell me why you don't like Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. Yeah, you should look into Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just trashing them and the company as they're standing right there. Tell the camera they're the best. I'm supposed to tell them that they're the best? Big, they're big fans of the, uh, of the, the video. Well, come to my store and do some signings and then you promise, I promise you'll be the best. All right, there we go. Good luck getting them out here. Yeah, good luck dragging them out. <laughs> he wasn't an AEW fan. He also didn't have a Kip Sabian figure. Not enough Kip Sabian variations, I don't think. Oh man, we're evil. He thought that I was the YouTuber. So he kept addressing me directly as if I'd arranged this whole thing, which was hilarious while Wood's walking around, you know, trying to get all of the footage. He really took to Kip once he realized Kip was a wrestler. The only problem is this thing's heavier than God, there's wrestlers here. So. Oh, you told him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're in his after hours at this point. The store's closed. He's just here because we're here. And he was having as much fun, if not more fun, than we were. And that was really nice to be around. He had a very infectious personality. We've already been here three hours, and we did not plan to be all away from our dogs as long as we have been. I bring the truck from the front around to the back without all three of us. This thing was not lifting. So when we originally decided to pick this up we were promised that it would easily go into this trailer smooth as butter um it was really heavy makes it even more scary that the left hand side with the light and the marquee that apparently breaks super easily i'm 99% sure it's breaking. But Gary gets down and squats with all of his might and we lift the other side and somehow manage to get this thing up onto the truck. Gary was right, successfully fits in the back of this truck and I'm going home with a switch kiosk. I'm very happy. <laughs> I did actually grab it on the bad side at one point and I heard it crunch and I thought for sure that I broke it. And there's no way of knowing until we get it home and plug it in. I don't expect any of the lights to turn on. We're all loaded up. We gotta buy all of our stuff that we've picked out. The girls have found a ton of stuff from the basement and in the store. I got this. Oh cool. God, I like it. I like it. I got her. I got a creepy pony. I got a little pony. I'm definitely getting this one, but I'm trying to decide if I need this one, but she's so pretty. She was so pretty. So pretty. I offered to sign a Sammy Guevara, but then as soon as we're about to check out, all of a sudden, this guy offers us the grand price of zero. I got a picture with you, Ty's right by my sign there. You sign these, you guys take the box. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's the deal. Seriously? That's the deal. Well, thank you so much. No problem, I appreciate hey. you guys coming. Kip and I insisted, but he said, no, it's fine, you signed things, you've already spent $1,500 in the store, which I see that. I really only have these two little Pokeball things that I want, and then the chair, which he just kind of thrusted in my possession. So I was like, okay, I've spent a lot of money, I can be okay with this. Kip couldn't let it go. It felt wrong. We'd spent the whole day here, I had to buy something. There's a Master Chief helmet that I I saw, maybe I buy the Master Chief helmet then. Deal. I don't want to come in and take stuff without. No, 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 no. Listen, but I'll definitely sign this. Listen, the exposure for your store, small business, and then, you know, just a good time, it's, it's more important than the dollar. I felt bad. Yeah, me too. It was too generous. We just spent, I think, maybe seven hours in this store. Do you want to give it a plug of where it is? Milton, Pennsylvania, dead middle of the state. Why should people come to your store? If you just want to relive your childhood for a heartbeat, to remember how it was to be a much simpler time. It was really fun, and it's a really nice store. And thank you so much for thank your you. time. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, yeah I want to oh, shake your hand, too. I appreciate thank it. You. Yes, shake thank your hand you. as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you man. It. Thank you, bro. For story's sake, we're home now. It's also been snowing a lot recently, and our driveway is super icy. It oh. was icy. I beat the shit out of it yeah. with a shovel. That was my version of helping. Yeah. So I didn't want to film trying to lift this thing into my garage because I was so worried about everybody's safety. Oh my gosh, that kiosk. I mean, I hope I was helping. I mean, it felt like I was helping because that thing was heavy. One last thing for the night before Kip and Liv go home. I opened up my Pokemon blind boxes. I'm opening these from the 90s, which feels terrible to do, but I want to know so bad if I got a Charizard finally. <gasps> I got Pikachu! Oh, that's God. pretty, that's sweet. Yay! Uh, and then there's a certificate of, of authenticity in there too. Poliwhirl, Poliwhirl, Poliwhirl. 
Pikachu again! Huh. Okay, that's still cool. That's Two Pikachus. They're not blind boxes. They're both Pikachu. It's Pikachu on the box. They were both always going to be Pikachu. <laughs> I don't need two of them though, so I gave one to Kip and Liv. And now it's like the Turtle Doves thing where we both have one and we can remember where we got it this special day of hanging out. Fast forward to now, a week later, this thing's been in my garage this whole time, but Kip and Liv are back over my house. I mean, Kip and Liv, as I said, are both wrestlers and they're both very strong, but Liv did just have hip surgery. So I'm so worried about her. My labrum was torn and it's reattached and Wood invites us out to uh, go pick up this Nintendo Switch kiosk thing and forces me to pick it up <laughs> out of the truck. And I'm like, oh my God, I just got done using crutches like two months ago. I'm perfectly capable of lifting this. And I was. It wasn't as heavy as I thought it was going to be. I took most of the weight myself. I've been working out really hard recently and uh, I felt good. I hope Wood's okay. He's been really trying recently in the okay. gym, bless him. Uh, <laughs> and this whole time I've been waiting to turn it on to see if the lights still work. I was nervous that it wasn't going to work because it was at this point that I realized we'd not tested this at all. I'm not even joking. So I was worried this wasn't even gonna turn on. And, well they do, they still work. And it looks so cool. <sighs> I wiped it all down, cleaned it all up, plugged it all back in, and it's so cool. It's actually so cool. I've been waiting a while to make this video because I've been making a ton of other videos and I've had to put blankets on it so no one saw that I had this. There's LED lights underneath that still work. The marquee still works. It's Animal Crossing, which is such a cool marquee to have out of all of them. I'm so happy. <laughs> I still can't believe I have one and also just how cool it is. I mean, it just looks like such a statement piece in the collection. I think the Switch is my favorite console of all time, not just because of the channel, but because of the library of games and how much I have played this console. I've never played a console as much as I've played the Switch in my life. I really wanted to get this kiosk now and to find one this complete that works in such great condition. <sighs> Very happy. So thank you, Gary, from Hinkle's Toy Barn. Thank you, Kim, Kip, and Liv for coming with me on this adventure. Of course we, we had, had a lot a of fun. Good time. Because we got to hang out. Yeah. I think we could have spent longer in there. I know, yeah. I just felt bad staying in the basement the whole time because you wanted me to film you picking up stuff. And I, I just wanted to dig through boxes of yeah. dirty toys because I we, love that. We got pretty selfish. I had a really good time. Everything I say sounds sarcastic though. Yeah, it does a little. You want the honest answer. I like nerdy stuff and I like wood. Thank you Just David Barber for randomly messaging me in Twitch DMs to let me know there's one near me. This all happened because of you. These are some of my favorite videos to make for so many reasons. So thanks for watching them. Love you guys and uh... Bye.